In the beginning of the story, we meet the main character, a boy named Roni. He stands by a grave, placing flowers on the tomb and talking to someone named Peter. With tears in his eyes, Roni expresses his desire to enjoy the blooming flowers together. Suddenly, three troublemakers show up, with the one with red hair taunting Roni and accusing him of inappropriate behavior. The bullies mock him and question his intentions, insinuating stealing and taking advantage. Despite Roni confidently stating that he has no intention of stealing anything, the red-haired bully insists and says, you dare talk back to me? Another bully questions Roni's posture, accusing him of sitting there every day. The red-haired bully adds, it stinks, get out of here, and continues to mock Roni, calling him a crybaby and accusing him of soiling himself. Roni defends himself, denying the accusation of soiling his pants. The red-haired bully questions Roni's claim, mentioning instances when he claimed to be going to the bathroom but ended up sitting like that. Another boy joins in, noting that Roni acts similarly every day. Roni, feeling defeated, protests, it's really not like that. However, at that moment, a voice from behind instructs, hey, gather here, and mentions that the principal is calling all of them over. One of the boys who used to bully Roni appears anxious, questioning why, while another asks, what's going on? They decide to enter the principal's office without knowing the reason, urging each other to hurry. Soon, all the boys, including Roni, gather inside, and the headmaster of their orphanage arrives. He expresses his concern, saying, Stay, you're all here, huh? Good, you guys should be a little more obedient. A good opportunity like this won't come twice. He notes the absence of the girls and adds, But the girls are nowhere to be seen. Then, he exclaims, Oh my, your excellency is here. Roni, surprised, wonders if a duke is present. At that precise moment, Duke and his wife entered. Roni, upon catching sight of Duke and his wife, wonders if they resemble the angels he saw in a book. The head of the orphanage, suggests that since the Duke and his wife likely already have children, they should select one child to return and play with the young master. A boy questions if this is a dream, while Roni reflects on being a playmate, recalling Peter's words about assisting the young master with lessons and enjoying numerous delectable dishes. However, the Duchess's gaze falls upon Roni, raising questions. The Duchess directs her attention towards Roni, who respectfully addresses her as, My lady. Duke's wife reassuringly calls Roni, Baby, stating there's no need to be scared and mentions they will only ask a few questions. The Duchess, contemplating, expresses amazement at how such a cute child could end up in an orphanage. Roni is met with reassurance and nervously replies that he is eight years old when asked about his age. The Duchess finds his age suitable and suggests taking him. Duke agrees, stating he'll follow his lady's wishes, confident that the child will love it. The Duchess asks for Roni's name, to which he replies it's, Roni. Duke and his wife bring Roni to the palace. Astonished upon seeing his room, Roni remarks on its enormous size, even larger than the orphanage. He hesitates to touch anything carelessly. Two maids then bring in food, and Roni is shocked as he has never seen such delicious food before. One maid, noticing Roni, asks if he is the one brought back by her lady. Roni confirms, and the maid informs him that her lady said he needs to take a bath. Roni questions the necessity, and the maid insists, stating he can't meet the master dressed like that. After being told to take a bath, Roni insists that he can do it himself as he's used to bathing alone. He pleads with the maids, addressing them as sisters, to let him bathe alone. The maids, finding Roni's innocent nature adorable, agree and tell him to take a thorough bath, while pouring juice into a glass, one of the maids explains that they are making the bath more comfortable for him. She hands the glass to Roni and encourages him to drink it. Roni, surprised, asks if he can really drink it, and the maid assures him that he can. As Roni grabs the glass, he marvels at its transparency and realizes he can see the juices inside. However, he accidentally drops the glass. Panicking and worrying about getting scolded, he apologizes and promises to clean up. The maid reassures him, but when she notices Roni trembling in fear, she asks what's wrong. Roni, trying to mask his panic, says it's okay. The maid instructs him to take off his shirt, surprising Roni. She quickly corrects herself, stating that she can undress him, but Roni insists on doing it himself. Despite Ron's protests, the maid helps him change into a new shirt and then proceeds to remove his pants. Roni firmly rejects her assistance, leaving the maid astonished. As Roni contemplates the situation, it becomes evident that Roni, 
who had presented as a boy, is actually a girl, and the truth is now known to the others. In the next scene, Roni recalls her mother's words, emphasizing the need to keep her gender a secret from friends. Roni's mom explains that it's a secret between them, stressing the importance of keeping it undisclosed until they meet again. Roni assures her understanding and promises to keep it a secret. On the other side, Duke and his wife are shown, and a maid approaches. Duke's wife asks whether the child, Roni, is truly a girl. The maid confirms, revealing that Roni concealed her gender, and because she needed to report the news, Roni was left in the room. Duke's wife wonders about the next steps, posing the question, what should we do now? The Duchess decides that they cannot let the situation continue and instructs the maid to bring girls' clothes for Roni to wear. The maid agrees and the Duke's wife comments on Roni being cute. Unexpectedly, a girl Duke ponders on the revelation. Meanwhile, Roni is seen sitting downstairs crying and contemplating her predicament. She recalls her mother's instructions not to reveal her true gender. Roni also realizes that the Duke wants to adopt a son. Thinking about the situation, she accuses the child herself of daring to trick them, fearing the Duke's anger. Roni contemplates the consequences if she's returned to the orphanage. The two maids approach Roni, confirming her identity and instructing her to get up and take a bath. Confused, Roni hesitates, but one maid grabs her hand and urges her to hurry. Roni protests, but the maid insists, leading her to the tub for a bath. While bathing, Roni reflects on how it's her first time having a warm bath, as she usually bathes in the stream. Despite lying to the Duke and Duchess, they still treat her well. When the maid offers to apply soap, Roni initially insists she can do it herself, but the maid reassures her, saying it will be faster. Roni reluctantly agrees, pondering about the uncertain direction her life is taking. After Roni's bath, the maid knocks on the Duke's room door, announcing that she has brought Roni. The Duke's wife invites them in, instructing Roni to enter. Apologizing, Roni expresses remorse, but the Duke's wife reassures her, stating that she called Roni not to punish her and encourages her not to be afraid. The Duke's wife continues addressing her husband and calling Roni baby. At that moment, Andy enters, addressing the Duke. The Duke's wife informs Andy that she was just about to call him, and Roni, surprised, hears the name Andy. Andy declares that he doesn't need any friends, introducing himself as the second son of the Duke of Marquez, Andrea Marquez. Roni, observing Andy, thinks he is the young master and needs a playmate. Andy approaches Roni, seemingly mistaking her for a doll, and questions his mother if she bought a doll. Roni tries to explain to Andy that she is the playmate his mother brought back, but Andy is surprised to learn that Roni is actually a girl. This leads to a moment of realization for both Andy and Roni. Roni expresses regret and apologizes to Andy for deceiving him, realizing he must have been looking forward to having a friend. However, Andy surprises Roni by stating that he never really needed friends. Despite this, Roni continues to apologize and pleads with him not to chase her away. As Ed contemplates the situation, memories from his past surface. Another boy asks if he doesn't have a sister at home, leading Andy to ponder and ask his younger sister. Andy addresses his father, pleading not to chase Roni away. However, Duke's wife reminds Andy that he had earlier said he doesn't need friends. Andy denies saying that and expresses that he really likes Roni, finding her adorable. Confused, Ron wonders about their conversation, realizing that the young master likes her. Duke intervenes, declaring that everyone has met her and it's enough. He instructs Roni to go back to her room, leaving her with mixed emotions, feeling as if she was looking forward to something. Roni reflects on how she can be forgiven for her deception. Duke and his wife discuss the situation, and Duke's wife urges him to reconsider. Emphasizing that if Roni goes back to the orphanage, she will face severe scolding. Andy supports this plea, however, Duke remains firm, stating that no matter what they say, it can't be. Duke's wife is surprised and questions him, and even Andy expresses surprise, asking his father to clarify. Duke reiterates, explaining that because Roni is too cute, it can't be his decision. Duke reflects on the situation, realizing that he truly wants to have a daughter. Frustrated with the compliments he receives about having a daughter, Roni's cuteness is undeniable to Duke, who confesses that the baby he brought home to play with Andy is actually a girl. He expresses how important she is to him, and Andy, happy with the decision, suggests keeping the girl. He admires his father, Duke mentions that he will slowly accept Roni as his adopted daughter. While Duke's wife, 
addressing him as darling, seems concerned. Duke's wife questions him about why he acted coldly if he genuinely likes her. Duke appears puzzled and unaware of his behavior, leading his wife to remind him that he asked Roni to head back with a cold expression. He suggested Roni go home to rest because she looked tired. And Andy comments on how scary Duke's expression can be, likening it to someone about to fire someone. On the other side, the maid informs Roni that it's confirmed she can stay there. Surprised, Roni asks if it's okay even though she's a girl, and the maid reassures her that it is. Roni excitedly questions if she will be the young master's playmate, and the maid confirms this, feeling fortunate. Roni believes that they have already accepted her. Meanwhile, the maid, observing Roni, thinks she looks like a normal person and wonders why they allowed her to stay, especially since she's a girl. Grateful, Roni expresses her thanks to the maid, expressing her determination. Roni tells the maid that she will do anything to stay and highlights her confidence in her cleaning skills. The maid, however, adds that aside from cleaning skills, the duke will be visiting soon, which shocks Roni. Fearing the encounter, she considers it scary. The maid advises Roni not to do anything outrageous in front of the duke. As the maid heads towards the door, duke opens it and enters, addressing Roni as, my daughter. Roni quickly hides behind the bed, and the maid directs the duke to where Roni is hiding. Duke approaches Roni, addressing her as, my baby. Nervous, Roni responds affirmatively and reminds herself to calm down, considering that they have allowed her to stay. Duke inquires if she feels comfortable there, and Roni assures him that she does. She apologizes for not greeting His Excellency properly and expresses gratitude for allowing her to stay. Duke reflects on Roni's behavior, wondering why she seems so scared of everyone. However, he shifts the focus, mentioning that he didn't come to hear her apology but rather to give her a new name. Roni, surprised, questions the idea of a new name. Duke explains that, Roni, was the name they had considered for a boy, but since she's a girl, they need a new name. The Duchess recalls a name she thought of when they had their first child, and Duke agrees that it coincidentally suits Roni very well. Duke announces, Rosaline, as her new name. Rosaline Marquez, surprised, repeats the name and expresses gratitude, calling it a beautiful name. She thanks His Excellency sincerely. Duke, checking with the maid, asks if this is her room. The maid confirms, and Duke instructs that Rosaline should stay in the room Sophia used to occupy. Duke adds that if they choose that room, there's no need to clean anything, indicating their intent to make Rosaline feel comfortable and welcome in her new environment. The maid reflects on the significance of the room Duke has chosen for Rosaline, as it belonged to Lady Sophia, His Excellency's younger sister. She questions why Duke would place Rosaline in that specific room. Duke steps out of the room and calls Rosaline, prompting the maid to believe that Duke might acknowledge the mistake. Rosaline herself contemplates the situation, wondering about being placed in such a room. However, Duke surprises them by giving Rosaline a nickname, Roro, and instructs her to remember it. After that, Rosaline remembers a past incident where she was mistaken for Roni and accused of stealing food. Someone threatened to teach her a lesson, but she denied the accusation. In the present, a maid informs us that Rosaline hasn't woken up yet and approaches her. Rosaline, still in bed, pleads for more time. When she finally opens her eyes, she startles the maid. Rosaline reflects on her situation, reassuring herself that everything is fine and the difficulties she faced seem like a distant dream. The maid interrupts her thoughts, reminding her to wash her face upon waking up. There is a hint of amusement and exasperation in the maid's tone as she comments on the repeated reminders. Rosaline acknowledges the instruction with a simple, yes, of course, and proceeds to wash her face. She marvels at the fact that she can use clean water for such a routine task. The luxury of this simple act resonates with her, and she finds it incredible. While washing her face, she expresses her appreciation, thinking about how awesome it is. The maid, harboring resentment, questions why she has to serve Rosaline, considering her just a commoner no different from herself. The maid hands over a towel, accusing Rosaline of spilling water on the ground. Despite this, Rosaline calmly expresses gratitude. The maid instructs her to swiftly wash her face and change clothes, and Rosaline obediently agrees. Upon seeing the beautiful dress, Rosaline expresses awe and excitement, wondering if she can wear something so exquisite. The maid, seemingly irritated, comments on Rosaline's posture and questions if she knows how to wear it. Undeterred, Rosaline asserts that she can indeed dress herself. 
The maid agrees and suggests that it's best for Rosaline to do it herself. While contemplating the beautiful dress, Rosaline finds herself uncertain about how to wear it. In the midst of her thoughts, the maid interrupts, addressing Andy and cautioning him about entering a girl's room without permission. Andy bursts into Rory's room, affectionately addressing Rosaline as, Dear Roro. The maid following Andy reminds him that it's improper to enter a girl's room casually. Andy proceeds to inquire about Rosaline's well-being, asking about her night's sleep and any discomfort in her body. Rosaline reassures the maid that she is fine. In the midst of their conversation, Andy casually asks about the situation. The maid downplays it, assuring Andy that it's nothing important. However, Andy, feeling a newfound familial connection, insists that Rosaline address him as her brother from now on. He expresses concern, telling her to inform him if she ever gets hurt. Later, all the family members gather for dinner, and the Duchess, considerate of Rosaline's preferences, mentions that she instructed the staff to prepare a variety of dishes. Rosaline expresses gratitude. Andy enthusiastically encourages Rosaline to try the delicious food laid out before them. He guides her on how to enhance the taste by taking a big bite. The Duchess, observing Andy's actions, questions his approach. Meanwhile, Rosaline, overwhelmed by the abundance of food, contemplates that it's the first time she's seen so much. She begins eating, and both Andy and the Duchess watch her closely, asking how it tastes. Rosaline, genuinely enjoying the meal, expresses that it's delicious. Andy proudly uses himself as an example of a super amazing brother, emphasizing the familial warmth and joyous atmosphere during the shared meal. The Duchess advises Andy to set an example as an older brother and eat more vegetables. Andy agrees and is ready to eat when the Duchess notices Rosaline's attire. She suggests rolling up her sleeves to avoid staining her clothes and offers assistance. Playfully, Andy offers to help, but Rosaline politely declines. Andy, surprised, questions if something happened to her arm. In the following scene, Duke and Rosaline are seen traveling in a carriage. Rosaline peers out the window, uncertain about her destination, pondering why the Duke instructed her to follow. The Duke notices her distress and hands her a handkerchief, advising against touching her eye. Gratefully, Rosaline expresses her thanks. Then, we show what happened in the palace before this poignant moment. Rosaline pleads not to be chased away. The Duke, taken aback, questions the sudden emotional plea. Tearfully, Rosaline confesses her reluctance to leave, feeling that she doesn't belong due to her perceived ugliness. Yet, she expresses a strong desire to stay despite these insecurities. In the carriage, the Duke addresses Rosaline with a serious inquiry, expressing his hope for an honest response. He questioned whether the manager of the orphanage had physically abused her, 